Hey, everybody. Welcome to our fourth episode of Behind the Register. Today, we have Morgan Wellman of Sugar and Spruce. Uh, you are my neighbor on Caroline Street, so we're lucky to have you. Uh, thanks for your time. Yes, thank you so much for having me here. I'm so always happy to chat downtown, you know. <laughs> I know. We're always past crossing paths, so and I, I know we're probably just always busy, so it's just yeah. nice to kind of sit down and talk. Um, <laughs> and I'm always... I'm always peeking into your windows. <laughs> Absolutely. Tell us. I know we're making something. <laughs> yes, you guys are. And it's always so fun to watch. So tell us about Sugar and Spruce. Um, you guys are making like bath bombs, soaps, and different products and things. Yeah, yeah. So um, my mom started Sugar and Spruce actually when I was in high school. So this is uh, actually our ninth year in business. So very exciting. Maybe. We make almost all of our products. So bath bombs, sugar scrubs, soaps, all that fun stuff. We try to focus on having good ingredients because my mom has her aesthetics background, but also still making it fun. So we like we like a fun balance. We have that kind of cheeky, bright, colorful brand and we wanna have a, a good experience for everybody. So we, yeah, that's kind of like a general overview. <laughs> it's super cute packaging, it's fun colors, but again, you're using natural and good ingredients um, in, in the products and stuff. Um, so when did you join on board um, now? And you're now a partner in the business. Yeah, so I actually like distinct memory when I was in high school, I hopped into my mom's bed to see what she's doing on her computer and she's making a logo for her new company that she was starting. Um, you know, I asked, hey, well, can I have a job? Because <laughs> 15 year old me was focusing on what can I buy that weekend, you know? So I kind of sort of started working there when I was 15. Um, I went away to school for a little bit, but when I came back, when I transferred to Mary Wash, my mom, really put a lot of responsibility on me and I kind of just shined, I guess. So when I was a junior at Mary Wash, she brought me on as co-owner and we've kind of just been going since. So she runs the back end stuff. She kind of prefers the, the books and the numbers and I get to do the people side, which I, I really love. I love being able to talk to customers and taking care of our employees and I love making products too. So that's kind of what I do a lot right now, just going in the kitchen and coming up with new products and all the exciting things that we have going on. So you do all the creative as well, like the product development and, and creative. What inspires you to like, you know, get that next product out or? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so I actually work with my brother-in-law. He's my production manager. So we work very closely. It's nice having someone that I can bounce ideas off of. We both have that kind of like creative inspiration. Sometimes things I see in life, um, different scents, even some like nostalgia things for me. Like I really love honeysuckle and like the things that really just bring the childhood and the fun, like our, um, some of fun flavors. Like we have one bite me, it's fruit punch. So we really like to play off of what we love and what we think the customers are really, really looking for to keep that fun cheeky brand, like I was saying, but also, you know, there's, there's always something that we can develop to push, push the next level. I love that. And I love that it's just so family oriented, like it's really um, small business, but it, you're keeping it tight and close with your family. And stuff. Yeah, we're, we're definitely very blessed to have uh, a great family that wants to be a part of it. You know, we have family who, who is not, but we are all so close because of it and working with them. It's sometimes sometimes you pull your hair out a little bit, you know, because you, you know, want to shake them. But I don't know. I'm just I'm so grateful to have someone that I can lean on who I trust so closely. And that's kind of always how it's been for me. I know I know I can rely on my brother and my mom and they always have my back. And it it definitely helps get through the hurdles, especially this past year. I don't know what I would have done without them, honestly. <laughs> well, I know it's like hard to do it alone. So yeah. it's nice to have someone that's like, OK, I'm thinking this. Is this right? And it's good to have that like feedback back and forth, you know, yeah. Even something as fun as something like a bath bomb, you're still like, well, is this the right one or should it be this? Yeah, one? yeah what color? Is this the right shade? What do we think? You know, it's 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 crazy how how much goes into creating a product and um, even not even just creating the product, but launching it, coming up with the name. And thankfully we do have great employees too that we can bring in and we all kind of have fun brainstorming what, what the next thing is. There's a lot of steps to it before you have it just ready to sell and things. Yeah, yeah it's very rare that we're like, let's just do this thing you know sometimes sometimes we'll just launch something and then try to scramble to pick it up after but there really is so much that goes into that bath bomb that you're enjoying in your bath you know have you found something that you were like oh this is something I really love and then like the clients didn't really like it and you're like oh why didn't that work out yeah, that happens so much I I'm like I think this is gonna be it this is gonna be it they're gonna love this and then it's like sitting on the shelf for a while and then everyone's just looking at me and I'm like oh Okay. <laughs> <Yeah. Both tried. laughs> 
Sorry. I think that's the fun part too, because there's some things that you're like, you know, I, I buy different things and some things I'm like, oh, that flew off. And then some things I'm like, okay, that's sitting there. Why, why is that? And it's just, it's fun to see that client interaction and what they're like attracted to. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's part of the fun. And that, and the, so you guys, I mean, how, how big of batches do you guys make? Like you guys are all constantly making, right? Yeah, we, we really are. And so, um, especially in the holiday season, sometimes me and Matt, we work through lunch making bath bombs. Um, one batch, we can usually get about 75 to 80 bath bombs out of them. Um, and then a whole day, I think, I think we've made over a thousand bath bombs in a day. So we, we really, we have bakery racks that if you've ever seen the store, bakery racks of bath bombs. And it, it's so rewarding. I think bath bombs are my favorite because you just, you're working all day, you're exhausted, but at the end of the day, you see like two full racks of bath bombs and it's like, wow, look, look at what we did today. That's incredible. Like, I I'm exhausted, but wow. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing that's different because let's talk about your store a little bit because I, yeah. um, for people who are listening and watching, I love how it's set up. You're on the corner of Caroline and what's the, is it oh. not Charlotte. Uh, it's okay. right by Jay Bryan's. Right by Jay Bryan's. I'm I'm totally blanking right now. <laughs> I, I I I do landmarks like yes. and and streets. Yeah, my Irish <laughs> eyes. <laughs> yeah. And um, so you you have two kind of big windows. That's your store store. But mm -hmm. then you have this other room, which I think is so cool. Is kind of just like your factory, like where you yeah. make everything. And you can actually see it. So you have all your equipment and you have your mixers and your tables and your bath bomb press. Um, so everything is made in that location. And then you could come and shop, you can smell, touch, and like, you know, move around the store. And, and the store is super cute. But then it's like you can actually peek into your production facilities, which is really different. And I, you know, there's a lot of bath uh, and body stores that don't do that. You know, they're just purchasing or, you know, but they're not making it custom like yourself. Um, yeah, cool. I think it's it, it is really nice. I mean, we're we are very fortunate to have the location. We were across the street at eight oh seven for a little while, and it was just one narrow storefront, so people walk past us all the time. So it's it's very nice to have the three because if you you know you walk past the first one, like oh what is that? The second one, and then you get to the third one where we're making everything, and people are like, whoa, wait a second, what is that? Like totally, people. Totally our kitchen sometimes especially if we're doing we do bath bomb donuts and I think we really disappoint some people when they go in and realize we're not a bakery <laughs> but it is it we love that fun experience you know that I, I love when we're making bath bombs and kids run by and check out what we're doing and just get so excited for for their bath bombs it, it really does warm my heart the, the excitement that people have I think that too because I mean I have kids and that's like their exciting thing they're like oh is can I get some you know like they always want something when they're yeah, of course. <laughs> thing to get you know uh it's not expensive but they can enjoy it and they use it and you know it's part of their bath experience and um so they really look forward to it and stuff and I just so now it's around Easter time and I see these you have these like really cute gigantic yes. big eggs. those are really awesome yeah they, um, they've been incredible because we, we order um like 3d printed molds and we use a um, air compressor press so we get like nice dense bath bombs when we ordered that mold we didn't know it was going to be so large so we were very surprised when it came in the mail <laughs> um but it is it's just it's incredible you know seeing we have the easter baskets full of these giant giant eggs and it's it is so exciting and um i don't, I don't know i just i really love the the fun things that we can do with our products I think that's the part of it. And, and that's probably why you are, you know, it's such a fun job for you because you're bringing joy. It's fun, creative thing, you know, um, and it's nice. I, I, I love bath and beauty products too. So it's yeah. kind of like, you know, I, so I could see why there's so much joy within it and stuff. Yeah. It um, is a very joyful experience and getting people to take the time to take care of themselves is really hard and it's so important nowadays though. So we really do love being able to facilitate that for people. Totally. And it's hard. Yeah. You have to try to convince them to take the time for themselves and like, like being creative and sparking that joy can help them do that too. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about COVID. Let's go back. It's almost been a year, right? It's crazy. To <laughs> um, you did close the store down a little bit, right? And then, um, but then you, you did online sales probably. 
Yeah, so we did we did completely close down for I think a couple weeks. Um, we let all our employees kind of get furloughed so they could get unemployment and it was just the family for a little while. So uh, we had our online store. We were very, very lucky to have a, a very well established online store at the time. So it was it was a pretty easy transition for us. Um, but there were some days about twice a week we'd come up and all day we'd be packing orders. So it was it was a very it was it was very nutty, but I think we're very thankful to be in an industry that was doing well in this in this time and soap in a pandemic isn't a bad business to be in so we're very thankful for that <laughs> and, oh, yeah so like we it, it's not the worst business to be in absolutely and we did launch hand sanitizer uh we were blown away by the response we we would sell out within a day almost so um, it was it, that was a really incredible um the hardest part for the pandemic i think for us has been getting ingredients because we do make everything so yeah. even to this day we are running out of products or containers. So I can make the product, but I don't have anything to put it in and I can't just give you it, you know? So it's, right. that's I think, been the most difficult part for us is just keeping our shelves full because our lead times go from, you know, a couple of days to now weeks sometimes. So it is definitely a huge challenge. That, yeah, totally. Supply chain has been disrupted a lot. Um, did you find that because you, when you closed down, there was like a bigger spike in online sales that then people were like, oh, you know, we're stuck at home. We need something to do with the kids. Let's like get some bath bombs, you know? Yeah. It really was not like, you know, people realizing like, oh, dang, like if I'm going to be here, I might as well take a bath or a candle. Like, you know, we really had to kind of push that, like you're stuck at home, like you might as well smell nice while you're there. So, you know, there were ways that we could kind of play with it. It definitely was tough, especially when people were going through money problems with, um, you know, a little bit deeper in the pandemic. We definitely saw like the, the downswing, but wow. we were, we were very, like I said, fortunate that we did have that online store and it was, it was a pretty easy transition for us. Yeah. Um, and so also, too, so when did you reopen kind of the store when you felt like, okay, we can have people come in and have shoppers and things? Yeah, I think I want to say it was probably around June or July. Okay. I don't quote on that, but we kind of did first, we would do, we just go up there and do online and then we kind of started doing pickups. So we would okay. open the door, put a little cart there and people could walk up to kind of control the flow. Um, yeah, I want to say it was around June or July where we kind of started letting people in. It was mask only. I actually have um, an, an immune condition, so I'm I'm very very strict about people wearing masks in the store, which is difficult because it is such a sensory store. You know, you really want to see everything. So that that definitely has been very difficult for us trying to control that and like, okay, you can kind of pull down your mask, but like keep it up and. Right, right. <laughs> It's definitely a little harder in a store like this where people people really do need to smell it and touch it and try it and not having testers is definitely I think impacted us as well but it, it hasn't been too bad so far I think we're, we're doing okay. And do you find that now you know it's opening up a little bit better easing up I mean people are still wearing masks but you, there's probably more people coming in and shopping more. Yeah absolutely especially around the holiday season there were a lot of times where we would hit capacity and have to close the door, which we were, you know, very, very grateful for, but uh, a little overwhelming sometimes having a line down the street, like running through trying to get all these customers out. Definitely the sales have been going up and we've seen more people coming in. It kind of feels a little more normal. I, want, I don't know that normal is the right word, but it's it's definitely picking up a little bit. And you. The you know, new a, every day is adjustment. Yeah, exactly. New normal. Every day, every day is something new. It feels like so. All right. What's the challenge today? What are we going to get through today? And just do the best you can. For your online sales, are you, is it national, international? Where's like the craziest place you've sent your bath bombs and stuff? Yeah, so we do, um, we actually have a couple like military bases that we have sent to. So we have like the okay. APOs and we have to go to the post office and, and do those. But we do, we have customers all over, all over the United States. We actually launched um, about a year ago, a soap of the month program where you could sign up and we would send you a soap bar every month because our soap oh, lasts about four weeks. So it, the timing was really great. And we have um, people in California, people in Oregon who are part of our program. So we, uh, we definitely have a, a good mix. I think it's, it's great though, because Fredericksburg is such a touristy town. We do have a lot of people who kind of stop through, you know, we are stuck on 95 and you just hop off and go downtown. So we do get exposure to a lot of people we probably wouldn't be otherwise. Yeah, and it's it's like how it's located. You're getting like people traveling north, people yeah. traveling south, and so that's cool. I always love that, like with the product, because it can travel, you know, wherever. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of cool to see where it all lands and where you know, uh, especially with an online store, you could just see where you're delivering and stuff too. Yeah, it is. It is 
pretty awesome when I'm fulfilling an order and it's going to Maine or Texas. I'm like, oh, how did you, how did you find out about us? Like we don't do a ton of online ad pushing. We really are a word of mouth kind of business. Um, we're, we're trying to change that a little bit, but you know, it is, it's, it's definitely very interesting. And I, I, I love to kind of come up with a backstory, like, oh, I bet you were visiting town and, and you love the products and <laughs> now you're in Texas, like ordering more. <laughs> hooks, right. right. <laughs> exactly. You love the best <laughs> And you also do wholesaling, right? So you, you're you like packaging it. Other people can purchase it if they have stores and things. So really you're kind of, you know, all inclusive, um, like all vertical and stuff. Is that a, a large portion of it or is it mainly your brick and mortar? Um, I would say brick and mortar is most of it right now. Um, we are kind of at the point where we're, we're having to make some decisions soon because we are kind of outgrowing our britches a little bit. So that's definitely been very awesome, but having to make some decisions now on, on the, what the next moves are. But wholesale has been really great. It's definitely slowed down in the pandemic, but it's a really good way for us to get um, more more consumers who to see our products. And we really, I love pushing out wholesale orders. We, we work with um, Shining Soul a lot. They're a candle company. They they supply our candles and then we, we give them back bombs. So it's, I love building relationships oh, cool. with like that. Yeah, oh, they're, they're cool. awesome. with them. Yeah, so that's my other question. Like, do you think you want to do more brick and mortar stuff or do you want to do more like online and have like a bigger factory? Um, yeah. Like, factory so, where you're at, like trying to decide. Yeah, that's, that's funny that you say that. So me and Crystal kind of have, um, my mom, we have different ideas. So she really wants to focus on the customer and I really want to do the wholesale side. So, so we're still trying to figure out what the next best move is. And okay. definitely with the environment right now the business environment we are trying to make some decisions on what what's the next move i really think that events are going to be very popular soon people are going to want to have those birthday parties for their kids that they missed out on so yeah. we're we're trying to bring everything in and kind of decide what's the next best move for us so we're we're definitely talking about it right now but i don't know that we've made a decision yet <laughs> i mean it's kind of exciting and it's hard too because yeah. you're, you don't know where it's going to go right so you're kind of like you know, of course, people coming out of the pandemic might want, you know, more, they, they're going to just want more of something, right? Yeah. We, we just yeah. hard to know what. Um, it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And both of you guys have both like, you know, since you have both of you guys, you guys can both be the head of each of those divisions and just yeah. keep doing it and keep expanding. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Do you ever think like you guys are based in Richmond personally? Yeah. Um, or is in Fredericksburg, do you guys think like, oh, we should have one in, in Richmond? Yeah, I think that's definitely the dream. The The dream is definitely in Richmond. I think it's a great town and it's still very close to Fredericksburg. So it's it's not going to drop off. We love Fredericksburg. We are not going anywhere anytime soon. But I think I think the dream is definitely to, to make our way down here. But, you know, we want to expand the, the client base. So we're kind of thinking maybe doing some pop-ups here when when those first okay. start. And I think that's always a good way. We, we did a couple before the pandemic, like right before the pandemic. So we're hoping we can kind of find those cute little pop-up markets and build our brand a little bit before we really pull the trigger on a, a move like that. Oh yeah, that's super smart. But you know, there's a lot of, uh, probably a lot of commercial um, real estate opening up at this point. Yeah. So that's the, that's the, I think the hard thing about um, just timing it, right? Because so you're like, oh, here are some opportunities, but should I do it now or should I wait? You know, but um, yeah. so, but that's exciting. It's really sure. you know, the, the, it's that we're very fortunate to be in a, a place of expansion instead of contraction. You know, it, and especially with the pandemic, a lot of people aren't aren't doing that. So very fortunate to be to have these these struggles and these issues. Like, where should we grow to next? You know, I'm very fortunate to have that problem. <laughs> you know, like the pandemic was hard and it, it changed yeah. a lot, but I felt like, you know, a year is long for some, but it's also short for some businesses, especially yeah. in around almost a decade. Yeah. Um, but that's only like 10%, right? So then you know that you can get past and then keep moving the way you did, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and, in, and in one sense, it could be a little temporary too. So, um, and, and so much of you have built up a, the loyal clientele, and then you've already had a lot of, you know, your online business. So you already had all those channels set up that, you know, when you just didn't have brick and mortar or walk in business, you still had a business. You yeah, know? It, was, it was definitely a very it was an easier transition. I know a lot of downtown businesses had to build um, websites and things like that. So definitely very grateful for that. I, I think it also showed us a little bit that 
we can rely on the online more. You know, I think we've always kind of been like brick and mortar, brick and mortar, but it was kind of nice to see like, okay, so we, if we want to, we kind of can push this a little bit more and just see what the next trajectory for the company is. And I think the best thing that I learned in the pandemic was to just do the best that you can, I guess. Uh, everyone is just surviving and trying right. to get to the next day. And it's really easy to get wrapped up in, oh, we have to do this. Oh my gosh, we're out of this. Ah. Um, but everyone is doing that. You know, I've, even Walmart is running out of stuff. So it, it right. was a really good um, lesson for me to step back, take care of myself and just be okay with doing the best that we can. Yeah. I think, and also it wasn't like it was just you experience, everybody was, which is kind of relaxing for me, you know, um, and everyone is trying to do their best. And everyone, I think all the clients wanted to support uh, and they were understanding, you know? So if you're like, oh, we ran out of this and it might not come back and people kind of were like, okay, like they knew, you know? <laughs> They were so a little upset, but I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I don't have containers. <laughs> yeah. You're like, bring a paper bag. No, just kidding. No, just, just go, go, go. Like, <laughs> um, so that's super fun. And so, um, so you really dived into this business, and do you feel like you're in it for like another ten years? You want to keep growing it up and up? Um, do you find like you? Are learning more things about it? Like, do you want to learn more about like the tech, like Facebook advertising type of things with it too? Or like, do you want to be like, I want to be creative and let's like farm that out to someone else? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, so I, as, as a kid who was just kind of in, kind of thrown into the business, like they never made me, but I was just really thrown into it. I kind of fought it for a little while. I tried to go work for someone else for a little while. And I think it was a really good opportunity though, because it showed me wow, I do love this. I do. I love being my own boss and I love, you know, getting to be in hands-on, like in a store hands-on instead of sitting at my a desk all day. So that was a great opportunity for me to really see that I love my company. I love the passion that goes into it. And it's something that I, I do want to stick with for a while. I think I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do anything else anytime soon. I, I really love it. I, I like letting my mom do the behind the scenes, like the, the, marketing and all those things actually my my best friend uh she does marketing so she helps us out a lot too so that's cool. really nice we can kind of do that but um i like the creative side more honestly i i got into photography last year so i like taking pictures of our products and i've been kind of seeing really that and i was i was totally gonna ask like is yeah. the photography gonna leak in and stuff yeah it is it, it's awesome that i can merge my hobbies and passions with my work passion so it it's something I, I always it's it's almost bad that I'm always like all right I love this thing how can I make it work for my business so I'm like no it's okay to just enjoy something just for myself yeah <laughs> <laughs> as a business owner you're like okay how is this going to help my business like how like I, I started making earrings I'm like do I want to make that part of my business like I don't know is this something I can do but it's like calm down just like enjoy things for yourself too <laughs> cool. yeah and you want to have like a hobby you know I think of people are always like what's your hobby and I'm like um uh, my business is my hobby you know and I'm like <laughs> but I'm like eventually I do want to have a hobby that is separate for the business and stuff yeah, so, yeah all the time you're just like well you if you're a creative person you get inspiration and you're like okay and then you have your business so you just see like how it kind of folds in together but. yeah exactly and it it is again it's almost a lesson in like okay morgan you need to calm down a little bit like let's let's uh let's step back take care of ourselves have our own things you know and um that's something i learned last year too like i was saying like we we all kind of went through different struggles so being able to take a step back and take care of myself was I think the thing too was before COVID, there was just like business was going so fast, you know, yeah. everything was good, business was good, and everything was up, up, up. So you kept wanting to add more and more. And then when COVID happened, it kind of like gave everyone a, like a, a break, you know? And then I was like, oh, okay, let's just stick to the core and let's do that really good, like, and really well and like not having to do all these extra things you know like parties events and like add you know all these other services so it was kind of nice to kind of like clear that away and, and come back to the center both for like myself and the business did you find that too like you were like okay let's stick to the nuts and bolts a little bit and then now it's like okay we can add these things back in yeah, it is absolutely. I, that's exactly how we felt. I I really did feel like we were like I was saying even before the pandemic, we were kind of outgrowing our britches a little bit, and it was 
definitely like, what's the next move? How can we push next, next, next? Um, so the pandemic was a good moment for us to just sit down and, you know, look at our finances, look at our trajectory, what products we were trying to offer. I, I realized we were doing a lot of things for the customer and not for ourselves. Um, not in a bad way, like it is good to take care of the customers, but I think it, there is a certain moment in a, as a business owner where you kind of realize, okay, I got into business for myself for a reason. And if I'm doing something I don't love and I don't resonate with, I, maybe I should take a step back and think about why I'm not resonating with that. And if I don't resonate with something, my customers might not resonate with it either. So right. it was an opportunity for us to sit down and evaluate what we were doing and just figure out what the next steps were at a, a much slower pace instead of constantly, I feel like I'm constantly putting fires out. Now it's getting back there, but constantly putting fires out and having, having a moment to sit down and evaluate what you're actually doing. And then it fails. And you're like, why did this fail? But it's because you're just go, 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 you know? <laughs> and it wasn't well planned or it wasn't something sustainable because it, yeah. you know, a, it could have been like, if it was something that you're like, okay, I'll just, I'll do this for this, but it wasn't really like what you really wanted. And it isn't sustainable, you know, because you do want it to be from the core of you and like, Clearly, you could see your passions and your, you know, what you like, and that's what's coming through, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so it's it's a way to like condense all of that and really push a very clearer message or and creative kind of energy and force. Yeah, I think we are we are definitely in a culture of with with the social media and with everything. We have such an access to information now that we're we're flooded with what other people are doing. So it's really easy to get caught up in, oh, but they're doing this and they're doing this. I should do that. Like, especially with bath bombs, we're like, you don't have a black bath bomb. Like that's gonna stain your tub. And we really try not to do that, you know? So it's it's just so easy to get caught up in what everyone else is doing. So it was a really good opportunity for us to like, okay, down, right. yeah, what do we want to do? I don't have to do what the Susie homemaker is doing. Like I, that's that's not my business. This is okay. not my brand. And it's right. really easy to get swept away in that. It is. I think it's, it is interesting as like all businesses, because you're always like, you want, you know, as a business owner, you want to see what's going on, but you only have control of like what you are doing, you know? Um, but some, some of it is just being able to say no and communicating why to the customer. And then they're like, oh, oh, that makes sense. You know, yeah. I, they're like, and they love you for it too, right? For yeah. having a, a, a stance and a position with it too. Absolutely. Um, I definitely feel that way. So what kind of fun products besides like the Easter egg that people can kind of look forward to uh, yeah. coming up? Yeah, so I mean, well, we recently did our spring bath bomb release. It actually was our biggest release yet. We did six bath bombs. So oh. we, we were kind of just trying to like push it out. Like, you know what? Let's just do six. Let's do it. So we have, we have some, you know, whatever. We can. We can just do it. So it's our biggest spring release yet. We have some spring um, honeysuckle sugar scrub we just released. And uh, I actually got one of my favorite fragrance oils in that I figured out. Uh, it's uh, actually a Yankee Candle scent. And I, I figured out oh. we found a dupe for it. So we're making like a, a quartz bath bombs. That should be coming out soon. So very, very excited. It's, it's, it's one of those things you just when you have the time to slow down, you can really get creative. And that's what we're finding now. Like we're finally being able to slow down and like experiment. We haven't been able to experiment in so long, like really so long. So it's really been awesome to just like, okay, we've got a little bit of free time because we have no ingredients in. So let's, uh, let's experiment with this other thing that we do have and just see how it goes. And we've been creating some really cool things with this. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to the next phase of our company. Do you do limited editions, like in terms of like, okay, we only do this for a certain amount of time or if something's like really good. You just like, you're like, this is permanent and you kind of phase out other things. Are you constantly kind of doing that? Yeah, we, we do try to mix it up. Cause I feel like, especially for, for sense, people are sometimes loyal, but also they really like to try new things too. So I, I try to always kind of have something new going on. Um, with our spring release, we're actually gonna take the three least popular and replace them with three summer fragrances. So we'll kind of be able to extend that out and the people people who love the spring fragrances can ha have those a little bit longer. Um, but I do sometimes, I if I really see that something is like shocking me with how busy it, like how, how well it's selling, I, I kind of have to reevaluate and be like, okay, so you know what? let's get rid of this then or replace it with this. And, and we, we do bring some on some sense on that. We had no idea it would do so well. Like we have a watermelon one now that was our summer one last year and it just did so well that we kept it. And it, that's incredible. Like I love when things like that happen. Do you ever find that people are like, Oh, I wanted this scent that you like discontinued two years ago. And you're like, I'm glad you remembered it, but we don't oh, have. 
I love when people are like, oh my gosh, when you were Lady Bird, I just, I love this set. I'm like, that was four years ago. I don't know what I remember what that set was, but people are, pe people are very loyal to their sets. So I do definitely disappoint some customers when I mix things up, but you know, like I, you gotta change things up and we have 80 different soap fragrances to choose from. So we, wow. we can help you find something that works for you. And we do have the option, um, we keep a lot of fragrance oils, so you can add it to a body spray or lotion. We leave those unscented. And if a customer loves a scent that we had in a bath bomb that we don't have anymore, I can make that into a lotion or a body spray for you. And we, we can kind of make it work for you. That's awesome. That's good to yeah. know. You know. Yeah, absolutely. So if you love peppermint and I don't have a peppermint bath bomb, dang, I'll make you a peppermint body spray, you know? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's I mean, it's so much of smell is really directly connected to memory and the brain. And so it really does so much. And that's why people do remember things and, and love, um, you know, and that's tied to an experience and a certain period of time. So they love that, um, yeah. which is why it's so cool. I love it. Um, it really is. Awesome. Awesome. So let's see, what else are you in? Well, we did that. I'm, we can edit some of this too. No, no worries. No worries. Anything else you want to add or promote? Um, I don't really know. I, I feel like we touched on so much. This has been such a great conversation. Um, I just want to say, just like, come, come check us out. You know, like we, I have amazing employees. They will walk you through every single product. Um, uh, give us a call. If you can't come and visit us in person, we have so many ways to kind of make it work for you with the pandemic now. And you know, and I, I we're on TikTok now, actually my employees, oh, you are? Yeah, gosh, I have to, I'll, I'll send you, I think it's get sugar and spruce. Um, but I, I let my employees do it. I, I'm, I mean, I'm 24, but I like, I do not resonate with TikTok at all. Like, I really don't. They're like, oh, we should get one. And they just started making these amazing videos. So yeah. I was like, do it. Like, go ahead. You don't even have to send it to me. Just, I trust that whatever you post is going to be awesome. But they do incredible, incredible, like transformation videos. And so we have good behind the scenes stuff. So if you are on TikTok, give us a, give us a shout, check us out, you know. <laughs> your other socials as well, too. Yeah. So on um, Instagram, we are Get Sugar and Spruce. And then we are also on Facebook at Sugar and Spruce. And uh, your website is? www.sugarandspruce.com. Tell us how you got the name because it was Ladybird before. So how'd you guys come up with Sugar and Spruce? That's yeah, so so Ladybird, we do love that name, but um, in Ladybird Fredericksburg. So we kind of wanted to get a, a brand that we could expand with if we really wanted to, and we do. Um, so we actually worked with the branding company and they just gave us a list. We, we told them what, what um, brand we're looking for, the fun, cheeky, colorful, like candy shop. And that was one of the ones on the list. And they sent it to us and separately, me and my mom just said, oh, sugar and spruce. And we're like, oh, wait, you like that one too. Oh, perfect. It's, yeah, so it's nice. We get that, the sugar, the fun, the sweet, the bath bomb donuts, but then the spruces spruce you up. And because a lot of men didn't like Ladyburg and the little <laughs> Ladybug logo. So, you know, men are particular. So, so we do <laughs> have like that, that balance now, I think where we are trying to create a brand that's for everybody and that can look pretty on someone else's shelf too because that's important to me too <laughs> I love the background of that and I never knew that so that's yeah, awesome yeah, so. I find that men are particular but they're really great shoppers because they're like here I have like I've been planning to spend a hundred dollars like what do you have and then they'll do it you know or something so it's like great thank you <laughs> um, the deer in the headlights so they like walk in and they're like oh I'm like are you getting a gift? I can tell you're getting a gift. Come on, let's go. <laughs> like, you know, like, I love shopping with men because they're just like, I'm like, all right, here are all these bath bombs. You know what she likes? And he's like, nope. I'm like, all right, I'm going to pick some out for you. We got this. You know, yeah, like, yeah. I love it. It's, and they're, they're usually not like super picky. I love them because they're just like, yep, great. Can't take, I'll meet you at the register. Whatever you pick out is great. Here's my budget. Yeah. I'm like, cool. I get to really have fun with it a little bit. <laughs> totally are. It's about budget, but it's, it's, they're so easy where we're like, we can help you out. And this is what we're here for. We're here to do it. You know, it's so. sometimes hard when a customer is like, no, no, I'm fine. I'm like, like, like I really want to help you. Like, and then they look at something and I'm like, oh, like, um, you know, if you like that fragrance, I have it in this too. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. It's, it's awesome. Super, super fun. Well, I had a great time catching up and talking with you. Um, and hopefully people come and shop and enjoy everything and see. I love the evolution and seeing everything in your shop. I love the displays too. They're always beautiful. Um, oh, yeah, we use um, 
Stephen Lippert Designs. We've been using him for like eight years, honestly, almost our whole time. So check him out. He's amazing. He's amazing too. All right. Well, thank you so thank much you. for thank being much. on this. Yeah. Uh, we'll chat more later and get more updates soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a good yeah. day. Yeah. Thanks so much. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Behind the Register. I'm your host, Brian Lamb, and this episode was produced by Haley Harkins. Special thanks to Fredericksburg, Virginia Main Street for hosting our episode. If you like what you've heard, support us, share, comment, and like us. We'll catch you next time on Behind the Register.